Good evening, I'm Kathy Lewis. Remember back when you were in school and you took a physical education class? Maybe you couldn't wait to play dodgeball, or maybe you dreaded climbing into those PE uniforms. I know I did. Today's students do not have as many physical education options by the time they get to high school. In fact, it's now called Health and PE, which allows for a lot more classroom time than you probably experienced. By sophomore year, it's time for driver's ed, and then by junior and senior year, well, if you aren't an athlete, there probably aren't a whole lot of options. But at Granby High School, they're doing something different. And as Lisa Godley reports, it's the latest chapter in positioning physical activity as a lifelong pursuit. The world outside may be sticking with the same old routine, but inside the small gym at Norfolk's Granby High School, things are definitely changing. Instead of traditional PE, these students are taking a NIA class, which stands for Neuromuscular Integrative Action, and they're loving every minute of it. Because NIA integrates dance and martial arts and healing arts, uh, music is a big component, and teens all seem to love music, of course. So they have really enjoyed the chance just to let go, be free. I'm a very energetic person, and Nia just let me get loose. And I just love it, it's very fun, it keeps me energized, and it gives me energy for the rest of the day. Nia is one of four different workouts these students are getting. When they're not in this class, they're taking yoga, Pilates, or martial arts. And after sitting in their other classes, Mary Dawson's Pilates class really gets them going. Some of their mothers, I think, had taken Pilates, but no, they had no idea what they were getting into. They love it. They love it. Um, they are put in some challenging positions sometimes, and um, they go for it. They try and get there, and they make a lot of noise getting there, but um, they're good. They enjoy it a lot. And these classes aren't just for the young ladies. We have a lot of males in the class, so it's uh, maybe 30, 70. It's good. It's good. And they really like it, the boys. It's good for the boys to try something new. You get a different thing out of each one. So I enjoy them all. I play, I play a lot of sports. I'm very active. Uh, this, these classes give me a chance to stretch and, like, like well, it loose my body. And I enjoy that very much. It helps me with every sport I play. I play a lot of sports. The idea to stray from the traditional PE classes that their parents took came from an art teacher. Nicole Harp says Pilates changed her life. And after talking with the principal, she got several friends who teach the classes on the outside to come on board at Granby as volunteers. Then she got a couple of local businesses to donate the yoga mats. The goal was to change the conscious level of the next generation. Um, their vision, of their idea of what health and exercise was, and to that they could make a lateral move into working out if they, the knee and the Pilates and, and the yoga really inspired them that they could just move, make a lateral move when they graduate and continue working. The idea is for them to continue um, with health and exercise. Again, interlock your thumbs, inhale, pull up and back, or to the ceiling. Exhale and fold from your hands, body your feet, looking at your knees. First time that I took them through Shavasana, which is complete and total relaxation at the end of the exercise session, they gave, up, they gave me a round of applause. <laughs> they enjoyed it so much. So it's a stress reliever, and these kids are under a lot of stress, and they really and truly need it. I'd say my favorite class is probably self-defense because we get to be like really physically active, like moving around. Like sometimes we even get to spar with each other, so it's like a, a good chance to like be well prepared for what we might encounter. Right now, this pilot program is only being offered for one year to about 50 Granby High School 10th graders, but it's definitely something the instructors and the students would like to see offered to everyone for years to come. In the meantime, these teens are just enjoying the experience. I think that this is the best thing, like it really is, because regular P is just regular. So giving us this, it really, you know, it makes us want to go to class. For What Matters, I'm Lisa Godley.
mouths and face. Regular PE is just regular. That's how it is. We're talking about the Granby Initiative, but also about others across the region that seek to tackle what's become a very serious health problem that, if left uncorrected, will follow young people into adulthood. And joining us tonight, Granby High School physical education instructor and the instructor with that program, Kim Baylor. Also joining us is Andrea Samsky, who's a teacher at Armstrong Elementary School in Hampton, and Tara Worley, who's a PE instructor at Forest Glen Middle School in Suffolk. So I'm glad we have the most of the region represented here. Thanks to all of you for being with us tonight. Uh, first of all, those uh, Granby kids, adorable, oh, each and every awesome. one of them. They're fabulous. Uh, all those little comments there at Granby High School. Uh, those kids just look like they're genuinely enjoying this. And I, that last comment uh, was so interesting. Well, right, PE is just PE, but this is different. Well, I think that a lot of the instructors put a lot of passion into what they're teaching. So when they come in, it's a different instructor. It's not me, the regular PE teacher. Yeah. So that's a good motivator as well. And these, these instructors are coming from all over the place, and they're giving their time and, sure. and their energy, and the, the kids are receiving it with everything they can and are putting forth their best efforts. But it's, it's real fun. And just in case you missed that point of the story, these are volunteer teachers that, I guess, Nicole Harp, who is a brilliant art teacher at Granby High School and just is one of those one of those teachers we need more of because she not she doesn't just do what she's about she looks around to see other things that can be fixed and made better too good job Nicole Harp uh, so she comes to you and says look I've got an idea that's exactly what happened last year she said I've got some teachers that would love to come into the school system I said great let's talk to Mr. Daughtry and here we are now a couple of months later and it's been an awesome program every Every day they have something different and looking forward to activity. Yeah, and so it's a year-long program and 50 10th graders at Granby. Do you expect it will be back next year? I mean, what would it take to bring it back next year? I guess the willingness of the volunteers. Well, we would need some volunteers, and, yeah. and obviously we actually had more than 50 students. We only have this one class available for this space and right. the instructor. This was, with being the department chair, I was sort of piloting it to see how it worked and to see how we can expand it. I would love to see kids teaching the classes, our instructors like myself getting certified to be able to teach it and have the volunteers offset it yeah. all. And you, you have uh, the International Baccalaureate program at Granby and that's a very academically rigorous program. Uh, what's that been like from a stress relief perspective for these kids? Well, I, I, think, I think at first the students didn't realize how much stress they're actually carrying. Yeah. When they walk in, their shoulders are up to their ears and they're like ready to do something. Mm -hmm. But I think by concentrating on themselves and, and reflecting on their own bodies, that they were able to really relax, let go of all that stress, and for 45 minutes just be themselves and, and let everything out. I love the one teacher who said she got a standing ovation at the end, you know, with these kids just kind of realizing how much stress they had been under. Uh, Andrea Samsky, what are you doing at Armstrong Elementary School in Hampton? We do yoga as our warm-up for every class. And these are elementary school children? K through fifth grade, yes. And so they're getting it from uh, a progression standpoint. And by the time they're in fifth grade, a lot of them are doing um, advanced yoga poses that you see in the yoga studios. Uh, I, I wanted to incorporate not just the physical fitness, but the whole child. And I think, you know, we've gotten away from that with the imbalance in education. It's been focused on one area, and we've, we've let the other areas go. And so. your nurse, you were talking to your nurse at your school yes. and, and really noticing some significant health impacts on these children. The physiological impacts of stress, as Kim was saying, had gone increasingly higher and higher. And kids leaving school, absences. And so I wanted to step elementary in. Elementary school. Elementary yeah. school. You know, the stress is there to do well on the SOLs, the benchmarks, and I wanted to make a difference with them. And we do progressive relaxation. They, t they now take it home and they use it before they go to bed at night. Really? A lot of them have anxiety that they're carrying all day long, right up to the time they go to bed. Aww. So, and parents call me and they thank me. They said, you know, I'm doing it with them, but I didn't even know this existed. So it's really helping a lot. And it gets to this idea of lifelong, uh, lifelong physical activity because one of the issues that has been noted before with the, a lot of what we learn in phys ed in school is great if you're an athlete and you can be on a team and good for you, but for the rest of us who are the last ones picked for the dodgeball team, there's, there's not a lot of options until these guys Right. Yoga is non-competitive. Right. So you're working at a different level. Each child in the classroom is working at their own level. And as they see other children progress, they look at that as a, as a means of a challenge to them. 
but not they have to reach it, but it's something they can try to achieve. So that's what I try to tell the kids. It, you know, you're all working to do your very best. Just like when we do progressive relaxation, I tell my kids, you can just be. Mm -hmm. Just you now. You're in a safe environment. Just relax, calm down, release all that energy. Just let your body heal itself during the day. You know, their immune systems, are, they get low like ours. So I really try to stress to them, you've got to let go of it. I find myself thinking about children who come from difficult circumstances mm -hmm. and wondering whether this can be helpful to them. Oh, most definitely. You know, they're emotional. The emotional ties to education, we don't realize it, but if you don't feel well, you don't learn well. Mm. Well, that also goes with if you are having problems in the classroom, well, then you've got this back and forth struggle and we're trying to eliminate, we're breaking it down, we're breaking yeah. it down. Yeah. Tara Worley is with us from uh, Forest Glen Middle School in Suffolk. Uh, you are really doing some interesting things there in, the, in middle school as well. Yeah, I'm really actually impressed with what's going on over here. You know, you don't reinvent the wheel, I'm gonna have to st steal some of these ideas and take them back, but we are. Hey, there's uh, nothing wrong with that. <laughs> you know, she was, we had talked about in our school a little bit, going back to what she was talking about, you actually go into the classrooms mm -hmm. and before, you know, there's a lot of pressure put on these kids for the SOLs, SOL, SOL, SOL. Go into the classroom and go through these breathing techniques before they actually take the test and helps them react, uh, relax and with the te does. Um, test anxiety mm -hmm. and things that really comes down. You know, kids always say, oh, I just get so stressed before I take that test. And I just, I would be anxious to see the results in and mm -hmm. how that works. It's very exciting. Well, you feel free to take her idea. <laughs> I will. That's fine, right? I will. Because that's what we're all get, about, is sharing good ideas, I'm right? I'm going to talk to her later, that's yeah? for sure. Yeah. Um, at Forest Glen, we are, um, we're doing lots of different things. Um, several years ago, a lot of people don't know that PE actually has SOLs. You know, they, 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 really? Yes. Virginia has SOLs for PE. They're not tested, unfortunately. Sometimes I think that's unfortunate. Um, but um, the SOLs have changed over the past, I'd say, 10 years and gone more from the team sports aspect into a more, what you were talking about, lifetime fitness and um, lifetime, lifelong act, act, uh, activities. So um, at Forest Glen, we're moving in, into some of those lifelong activities. Um, we bring roller skating in, something that those kids can go home and you know, get the skates, get out in the street, go to the roller rink, and um, we bring it into the gym and let them participate there. And lots of fun music that they enjoy listening to. Absolutely. That's key, I think. That's, for yep. middle school, that is key. You gotta, you gotta hit them right where, you know, they get away with their friends and, yeah. and have a good time. And so we gotta find the appropriate music, of course, and yeah. uh, bring it into the classroom <laughs> the best you, you can, and, and, and they love that. A question, and I, it's, it's been a while since I was in PE class. Um, do you still have uniforms in PE now? We do, starting in sixth grade. Are they grade. still so doggone attractive? Um, absolutely not. <laughs> you know, um, they are, they are um, school uniform uh, or school, what is it, dress code appropriate. Uh huh. Dress code appropriate. And they okay. start in, in Suffolk, they start in sixth grade. And from sixth grade through tenth grade, they have to dress out. So you have to dress out. Mm -hmm. And you, you were telling me before we started, I found this just hard to believe, that you can fail PE. Um, yes. And it happens. Yes. Unfortunately, more than it should. And it's, <laughs> it's it's simple things. They have to dress out and they get graded for dressing out and participating. We, In Suffolk, the dressing out part is not as big of a portion of the grade as the participating because okay. that's the most important. So you try. Yes. Oh, you yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's about, you know, putting forth the effort. You don't have to be the best. Yeah. Do you find uh, one of the things that we know has happened in schools over time and particularly in middle schools and high schools is, well, and certainly it even goes down to elementary schools as well. This um, focus on concentrating on a sport, particularly for children who have so of any degree of athletic ability. Uh, it seems like now there's this real intention about getting them to focus on something early on. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm a field hockey coach, and it would probably be interesting to all my players' parents to hear me talk about this subject because we definitely participate in the sport year-round. Uh -huh. There are opportunities year-round for these kids to participate. Um, they start as young as, you know, 9, 10, and they're playing, you know, field hockey year round. I know that there's softball teams, there's baseball mm -hmm. teams, there's all kinds of stuff. They are starting to focus early. I don't necessarily agree with it that early, in my opinion. I think they need to have a well-rounded, try everything. You really don't know what you're gonna do at that age. When mm -hmm. I played, I played sports my whole life and I did, you know, I had a season for each sport at the younger ages. You know, you start to focus when you get a little bit right. older. And she you were a soft play, play, softball player. In softball college, right? and field hockey. And field mm -hmm. hockey as well. And you were a softball player, and Andrew, tennis. right? And tennis. Wow. Uh, I wonder what your thoughts are, though, uh, both of you, about this issue of the specializing. It, it seems to me, as an observation, that you, 
you have this situation evolving now where you really set up a line of demarcation between the kids who have athletic ability and the kids who don't. Well, in Hampton, we're trying to gear our program away from athletics. It's more fitness oriented. And like my program at, at Armstrong, it's all fitness. You're learning the skills. Right. I'm not saying you're not learning how to shoot a basketball or throw a ball correctly or know some of the rules, but we're encompassing more of how are you getting fit by doing it. Um, That's a really different right, and it's not than we've so had, much it? of um, we won, we won. Yeah. I tell my kids, "Did you have fun? Yeah. Then you won." Yeah. How, you many, know? how many people really? Um, not many people play sports, organize sports their whole life. Even people that were athletes, you see, they have families. The time is just not there. We're so, you know, involved in so many other things. So if you can, if you can teach them how to to do these things that they can do, these small things, these fitness ori you know, oriented things, then that, that has to be the focus. And I will say that the SOLs in the past, ten, when they redid the SOLs several years ago, that is more of what they went towards. Hmm. That's interesting. Uh, uh, Kim Baylor, what do you think about this issue? Well, I'd like to give the students a choice. I think there are those students that would love to play team sports every day, all day long. Sure. And I don't want to take that away from them because I think that's a good growing. And, well, and it's where they are skill-wise, right? Exactly. Yeah. But I also think we need to offer and provide opportunities for students that are not competitive-minded. They don't want to be out there on a sports team and have to race and compete and, and have more anxiety develop by being in a PE class. Oh, so I'm trying right. to offer at Granby actually three choices, whether it's lifetime activities, which would be golf, tennis, Maybe a little volleyball, frisbee, croquet, mm -hmm. um, individualized fitness where you could get on our spinning bikes. We just purchased uh, lots of spinning bikes with some award money last year. Get kids doing walking programs, walk across America, which could pull in some social studies and, and math, mm -hmm. and, and also provide um, the team sport. So I would like to provide the opportunity, I think, futuristically, where kids could choose what, what type of curriculum do I want to have in physical yeah. education? And then I think our teachers need to step up to the plate and be able to teach those. Boy, no kidding. I mean, I love having volunteers come in, but the school system's not going to pay me my salary and then have someone else come in and teach my class. I mean, it's great. I love it. But <laughs> um, I, I would like to be certified in some of these individualized activities so that I could be a, a good asset to my students. You know, it makes you wonder whether you wouldn't get more people pursuing an education field if they felt like, you know, I really like yoga. Hey, I'll go be a, you know, if there were that kind of option existing more frequently, it's, it might make you Sometimes, I mean, I, I heard her say about the non-competitive students. You know, it's it's pretty closely matched there. It's about 50-50. You're going to have those team sports, those go get them mm -hmm. kids, and you're going to have those non-competitive. How However, I think as PE teachers, we are often viewed as the competitive, right. and I don't think that we always are. You know, I think we, we as educators know that there's different sides to that, and if we can offer those options, it allows those kids to be more comfortable because they, they come into PE, you know, yeah. like yeah. this, because they're so nervous and because, oh, this is not where I'm comfortable. I right. do not don't throw me the ball right you know yeah. and so I'm you good y'all yeah. take it I'm good yeah, yeah. and yeah. sometimes I think that then falls into their grade right because they're not participating because they don't want to they're just not participating because they don't feel comfortable because the kids around them are so much better than right. them or or whatever so I think finding that even balance and giving gosh I wish we could give the kids an option you know have different teachers and they sign up you know like do you mm -hmm. sign up for advanced biology you sign up for earth science you sign could we can you know can we have team sports could we do that oh wow I hope Wouldn't so one day. Something? Mm -hmm. well you know and, and it's a great point because the kid that is a team sport person is probably bored by some of the other stuff, perhaps, uh, that's underway. So it would be great to have that level of, of choice and opportunity. But in order to do that, you uh, have to compete against all of the other academic requirements and the academic offerings. And you were saying that your kids are even in elementary school stressing about the SOLs and all the rest of it. I mean, do you see a time uh, when that pendulum begins to shift back? Because it sure seems like PE, art, music, that's where the cuts happen when they happen. And I think to be successful with SOLs, you need those three classes you just mentioned. Yeah. Because without physical education, there is no release. Yeah. Without the freedom of, of artistic design and creativity, then the stress levels will go up even higher. And these students won't be able to go into the classrooms and be able to concentrate on the core four subjects if they haven't had other opportunities to be themselves and to let that energy out in either a physical way or artistic way or even yeah. musical. That's a good I mean, point. The musics are just as important, in my opinion, as 
agile health and PE classes? I think uh, we saw physical education for a long time as just a release. Mm -hmm. And I know with my program and several of the other programs, we don't want it to just be a release. We want the children to understand their bodies. There's a breakdown there. The children have got to know what their bodies are doing. Um, as I was talking to my kids today, I said, SOLs are coming up. I don't want you to get into fight or flight mode because mm -hmm. we talk about the brain. I talk about what we do to keep them calm as I was speaking with really? her. Really? Yeah. Oh, yes. You know, why do we take the deep breathing exercises? Why are we focusing? And I told them, I gave them a test uh, a couple weeks ago. I said, we're taking a test. It wasn't a test at all. But I wanted them to feel all those physiological changes. They wrote them down. Oh, isn't that interesting? So yeah. then we went back and I said, this is how we're going to combat these things for your test taking. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> That's and pretty impressive, isn't they it? they said today, I gave them a, a benchmark test. I said, I don't want you in fight or flight mode. Because they've learned, I took my hands and I said, this is one part of your brain, this is the other part. This is the part that protects you. This is the part that has knowledge. When this one goes into effect, the other one shuts down. That's why you get that test in front of you and you draw a blank. Yeah. So my kids said, I'm not going into fight or flight mode. <laughs> I'm going to stay calm for this. And I'm going in next week to do a little bit of an exercise with each one of the fifth grade classes for their, for their SOL testing. Because also it's, it's something they've done with me. Right, sure. So it's familiarity there. Sure. It makes it easier for them. Will you be documenting that and tracking that? I mean, you know, one of the things we know is that everyone is a fan of measurement tools <laughs> and all the rest of it. Uh, hence the SOS. Uh, are you going to be documenting the impact of this sort of before and after? Well, we're fully accredited at Armstrong. We've been for years. But it's really hard to do that because you're not given the test statistics so I see, much. I see. Yeah. But I do talk to my kids about it, how they felt. Because every time I get their input, I build my program a little more. What do mm -hmm. they need? You know, they are clients per se. They're students, they're children, but they are clients. I have to tell you something. We need so many more teachers like the three of you in our schools. <laughs> there is just they are clients. They are they're and this is now I'm on my soapbox, but one of the things you know we, we talk about a lot is Every child in school, whether they're your child or not, it matters what happens to those children. Talk about what matters. It matters what happens to those children. Sure. And I don't care if you have children in the schools. You ought to care what's coming out of the public schools. And you ought to care uh, whether we have kids who have these kinds of abilities to manage their own reactions, manage their own emotions. How many times do we have issues in the broader world that are about not being able to manage emotion? And it seems to me some of what you're doing. I say really it all the time. like. Um, you know, so, so they know all this information for SOLs, yeah. but what good is that in the future if they don't know how to take care of themselves? Yes. Mm -hmm. Such a good point. We need more of you all. We need to clone all of you. Thanks to all of you for being with us tonight. I, I would like to come to see your classes sometime. I think that would be great fun. <laughs> and I'll be back in a moment with a final thought. The new lifelong exercise options they're testing at Granby and implementing at the other schools we featured tonight are a welcome sign in a culture that is rapidly eliminating opportunities for physical activity, except for the most athletically gifted. I'm not sure you'd notice the sea change in youth sports unless you've spent a few years, as I have, traveling the mid-Atlantic with a two-sport athlete. I'm not talking about traveling with the school team, by the way. I'm talking about traveling with athletic teams from private competitive clubs. Here's how it works. For sports other than football and basketball, sports like soccer and lacrosse, gymnastics and volleyball, there are private clubs to which parents pay thousands of dollars a year for their children to compete against other such clubs. The recent result is that in many cases, college scouts with scholarships to offer are coming to club tournaments and bypassing high school games altogether. Now, there's a lot that's good about club sports. For our family, it provided a safe, active, healthy avenue for our child to explore sports she was good at, which made her more confident and gave her the option to go to college on an athletic scholarship. For some of these young people, club sports paved the way to colleges that wouldn't have been fiscally feasible otherwise. But the downside is that club experience has now become a prerequisite for many high school teams. And that's troubling because it means that other young people whose parents can't afford club play never even make it to a tryout.
The other downside of the new club culture is that it forces young people to specialize in one sport at a very early age, and it cuts off opportunities to explore other sports. That's probably not a good thing. And that's what I like so much about these programs we've been talking about tonight. This program at Granby, for example, it's a great way for young people to see how physical activity can be part of their lives for a lifetime, for all young people, regardless of whether they're athletes or not. There is no superstar yoga team. It's just you and your mat and what you choose to make of it. It also has to be said that this initiative demonstrates something I frankly haven't seen as much of as I'd like, and that is creativity and open-mindedness open to new ideas in public schools. This initiative came out of the art department. Now, a less creative administration might have stopped it there, but the principal and the phys ed department demonstrated tremendous leadership by breaking down the barriers that often stop a good idea dead in its tracks. I'm a big believer in naming names, so to art teacher Nicole Hart, Principal Ted Daughtry and our good friend who is with us tonight right here on the set who is teaching that class, I say namaste. Now before we go, we want to pass along a few comments about one of our guests on a recent roundtable discussion. Bill Harrell says about panelist Pat Murphy, it was wonderful to see him again. The man has his facts together. Please have Pat back on again. We could all use a dose of Pat Murphy more often. So the good news is Pat Murphy will be back with us, along with some other bloggers as well. And our thanks to all of you for your comments on that. Here's a look at what's coming up next week on What Matters. Uh, we have members of the General Assembly joining us to talk about this year's session. And we're also talking with about Hollywood in Hampton Roads coming up. And then the life of Waterman and Hampton Roads. Thanks for being with us tonight. We'll see you next time for another look at What Matters.